I'm going to show you guys how to write an expression for the inverse sin x. And we know that the original sin x is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2, right? And you see, for the original, we have e to the something. Maybe for the inverse, we will end up with ln of something. But let's take a look. Right here, we only have the inverse, huh? And this is the style of doing these kind of things. Let me begin by saying, let another variable, I will just call this to be y, let y equals to this, the inverse sin x. And the reason for me to do this is so that I can now take the original sin on both sides. And you see that the original and the inverse cancel each other out, right? And let me write the x down first right here. So I'll put this down as x is equal to the original sin y. And once we have this right here, we can apply the definition of the original sin to this. x is still just the x. And now the input is y, so this becomes e to the y minus e to the negative y all over 2. This is just the definition of sinh, of whatever you have inside. And you see that earlier we said y is equal to the inverse sinh x, right? And this is what we have now. And we have the y right here. If somehow we can solve for y right here, that will be an expression for the inverse sinh x. And let's see how can we do that. Let's go to the fundamental. For example, right here, um, this is an equation with fraction, right? So let's multiply by 2 on both sides. So we are talking about this is 2x equals to, this is just e to the y, minus, and we have e to the negative y. This is the same as 1 over e to the y, right? Negative exponent. So in fact, this is still an equation with fraction. Let's multiply everything by the denominator, which is e to the y. And you see, be sure you multiply everything by e to the y, OK? For this right here, we will have 2x e to the y. And this is equal to e to the y times e to the y becomes e to the 2y. Be sure you add the exponents, y plus y, you get 2y. That's what we have, right? And then this times that is going to be just minus 1, because e to the y cancel each other out. And now that's what we have. And now what? Our goal, okay, you have to remember, our goal is to solve for the y. And you see right here we have e to the y. And this is e to the 2y, which is technically the same as e to the y in the parentheses, and then square. Hmm, that looks like a quadratic equation. So let me just set this up for you guys. Let's move this to the right-hand side so that I will have a 0 on the left-hand side. And this is equal to... For this, I will write it as e to the y first, and then I will square that. They are the same thing, isn't it? e to the y and square is e to the 2y. I move this to the other side, so it becomes minus 2x, but I will put the e to the y in red. And then we have the minus 1. I told you it's a quadratic equation, isn't it? This is a quadratic equation in terms of e to the y. You have this square, and have this, and at the end, you don't have e to the y. So what I mean by that is, if you look at this and compare it with the standard form of a quadratic equation, and let's have the zero on the left-hand side. Quadratic equation is a, and usually we use x, but we have used x already. So let me just use another letter. Let's say a times u squared, and then we add it with b times u, and then plus c, isn't it? This is a quadratic equation in terms of u. And now you have the u being e to the y, right? And right here, we can solve this equation because we have the quadratic formula. So let me just identify the ABC values so we can use the quadratic formula. A is equal to 1. B is equal to this right here. It's the number. Technically, it's the number in front of the u. But in this case, we're talking about e to the y. So the whole thing right here is the b. So it's not just a number. It's everything, negative 2 x, OK? Negative 2 x for the b in this situation. And the d is equal to negative 1. And that's what we have. All right, so I will tell you guys this right here. I will just uh, I'll put this down in black right here. Let's see. All right, so 
uh, let me just write this down for you guys. Um, the quadratic formula, right? Um, well, in this case, we will have the u, and I'll just put this on in black. u is equal to negative b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac all over 2a. And now we see that the u is the e to the y. So I'll put this down in red. Okay, so this is e to the y. And let's see, this is equal to negative, it's still the negative. And the b is the negative 2x. Once again, it's this right here, right? So negative 2x. And we have the plus minus still. Open the square root, and then the b is still negative 2x. And then we square that, and then minus 4, and times a and c. a is 1, c is negative 1. So we have 1 right here, negative 1 right here, and everything is over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1, like this. And this is a setup. Right, back to black and red. On the left-hand side, we have e to the y, and this is equal to negative negative 2x becomes positive 2x, and then we have the plus minus, we open the square root, negative 2x in the parentheses, and then square becomes 4x squared, and then negative 4 times 1 times negative 1 becomes plus 4, and then this is all over 2, right? 2 times 1 just 2. What can we do next? Well, you see that we have 4 and 4. We can factor out the 4, right? So I'll put this down right here real quick. We can factor out the 4, and then inside here we'll have x squared plus 1, like this. And just to show you guys the steps, this is e to the y equals to, this is 2x plus minus, this 4 is in the square root, and it's multiplying with this parentheses, right? Square root of 4 is the 2 right here, and then this right here stays in the square root, so we have the square root of x plus 1, and this is still all over 2. And you see that this has 2, and this has 2, and the bottom is also 2. Technically, I have to factor out the 2, and then you see x plus minus square root of x squared plus 1. So you can cancel the 2 legitimately. Anyways, this is e to the y equals to x. And we have the plus minus still right at the moment, right? And then this is square root of x squared plus 1. This is what we have at the moment. Well, two things though. Plus and minus. Which one are we going to take? Well, maybe both. What do you think? Well, I will write this down in blue again. Notice that we have e to the y on the left hand side. This right here is always positive, isn't it? Right? e to the something, at the end, it will always be positive. Well, if you look at this, x, and if you look at the subtraction version, minus square root of x squared plus 1. x, and then square root of x squared plus 1. Which part is bigger? This part is bigger. And then you have x minus something that's always bigger. This right here become what? This is always negative. Alright? Real quick, give me an x value, let's say 2. 2 right here, 2 minus uh, pretty much square root of 5, right? 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5, square root of 5. 2 minus square root of 5, you end up with a negative value. You can use any other x value if you would like, but you always end up with a negative value. Well, on the left hand side, it's always positive, on the right hand side, it's always negative. This is not allowed, it, right? So we are not going to use the negative sign right here. e to the y, it will just be x plus square root of x squared plus 1. And let me finish this right here for you guys. So right here, we will have e to the y, and that's going to be x plus square root of x squared plus 1. And keep in mind, we want to isolate the y, right? How can we do that right here? Well, we can just take the ln on both sides. And by the way, use parentheses. We are not doing integrations, so just ln of parentheses, okay? And we take ln right here as well. This and that will cancel. I get the y by itself, and this is equal to ln parentheses x plus square root of x squared plus 1, right? What is y? We set y to be the inverse function x, right? So right here, I can say to you guys that the inverse sin x, this is just, as I said earlier, ln of something, right? ln of 
x plus square root of x squared plus 1. And this is an expression for the inverse hyperbolic sine function, namely the inverse tangent right here. And that's it.